Hey guys, welcome back. So today I brought home this Yamaha EF6000. Now I've never worked on one of these before and don't know much about it. But by looking at it, I'd say this is an older model. I'm not sure how old, but probably at least 20 years old. At least on the outside, it looks to be in pretty good shape. Now, the listing didn't go into any details as far as the run condition of this machine. And I didn't really care because it was only listed at $50. So regardless, broken machines in my area sell for more than that. Hopefully that's not the case here, but I guess we'll find out. So let me get you set up in a stand. I wanna check the basics. And if all looks good, we'll just throw some gas in there and pull that cord and see what happens. Yeah, that oil looks new. Okay, I'm just gonna check the voltage here on the battery. And we're sitting at 4.8 volts, which is uh, quite low. So this terminal too is loose. And this one's not much better. So let me get this battery off. I'm gonna throw it on the charger for a bit, see if it'll come back. So just want to show you where we're starting off here. I got a 12 volt tractor light and even though we have four volts in the battery, you can see it's not enough to light this light bulb. So I don't give this much hope, but I'm going to put a manual charger on it and see if it'll take any kind of a charge. Okay, another check I like to do is grab the throttle linkage and try to actuate it. Now, it's buried in here, it's kind of hard to show you, but it is moving. Uh, it feels a little bit gummy, so the car probably needs to be cleaned, but it should be safe to start. This thing shouldn't run out of control. Now, I did pop the cap off the tank, and you can kind of see down here, the tank isn't rusted, and it is pretty much empty. But with that said, the fuel was left on and there is fuel in these lines so I would think it would start if I tried pulling that recoil if the carb isn't clogged up so you know I'm gonna add a little bit of gas just for good measure and pull that cord a few times and see if we get any signs of life Okay, yeah, it's showing absolutely no signs of life. So I'm willing to bet it's the carb. You know, the compression feels good. You know, spark could still be an issue, but I'd say most of the time it's the carb. So let's get that thing off and uh, clean it up. Yeah, I'm not so sure I'm gonna be able to pull the carb without getting the tank off first. So I think I'll start there and uh, see where it takes me. I don't know if you can see that, but at the bottom there, where the color changes, that's water. So there is water in the system. Most likely it's in the carb. Potentially that's the only thing keeping this from starting. You know, unfortunately there is no bowl drain. So, you know, I could crack the screw here, which I'm tempted to do, but you know, I wanna make sure this carb is cleaned right. So. I'm just going to get the whole thing off and see what we're dealing with inside.
Yeah, I think the carb needs to be pulled. Doesn't look too good. And the main jet's in the back, so it's not like I can unscrew it very easily anyway. So, yeah, I guess we'll stick with plan A. We'll get the tank out of the way, get the carb disconnected, and give this thing a good bath. So there's a number of things going on here. There is a servo vacuum operated right here. And this here is the idle down feature. It acts against the governor to slow the engine. Also, there's another servo right here that is an auto choke and that's connected to the manifold so that when the engine powers up, you know, it actuates the choke, basically opening it up and you know, at first I was thinking I could remove this bolt and just pull this plate out of the way, but this actually goes down and it's sandwiched between the carburetor and this intake pipe. So I think the best bet here is just to remove this vacuum line, remove these two bolts, and then I should be able to get this assembly off in one piece. These wires here did surprise me a bit. I wasn't expecting to see that because there is no mechanical servo here, but it looks like there is some sort of a switch providing feedback on the choke position. And yeah, I mean that it's gonna have to be removed. So I think removing this screw right here should at least get the top plate off and, and then we can keep going, I think after that. Yeah, the choke plate seems to be frozen. It's either that or the servo. I'm not sure. Yeah, this wasn't well, too well thought out. This servo is blocking access to the screw, so I can't put a socket on it or a screwdriver. And the only thing I have that'll fit is an adjustable wrench.
Yeah, that choke was pretty frozen up. I'm just gonna screw this in and see where we're at before removing it. Half one, half, and maybe a quarter. So we're at one turn and three quarters. Surprisingly, the main jet is clear. So this jet here, the pilot jet, it's kind of hard to tell if it's clear or not, but I'm surprised we didn't get something out of this, unless it was in fact just clogged with water, but you know, it had to come apart anyway. That choke plate was frozen and it still is quite frozen. Anyway, just gonna run a wire through everything and let it soak in the ultrasonic for a bit. I have a bad habit of forgetting the emulsion tube, so it is removable on this one. The emulsion tube doesn't look bad. It's not clogged up. So yeah, must have been water in there, or maybe we're dealing with a spark issue, but this thing had to be pulled apart anyway. It is it is still a mess, and this choke plate is not usable as it was. It's already freed up a bit, but still not where it should be. Okay, overall cleaned up pretty well. You know, the choke plate is now free. And I think the thing that really stands out now is this gasket. You can tell it's just an irreg irregular shape. And this is just a piece of cardboard someone cut up at one point and threw on there. So, you know, that's probably not the best thing. I do have gasket material, so I'll end up cutting a new gasket before reinstalling. Uh, but otherwise, the carb itself, I think, came out pretty well.
So I found this gasket, I believe it is a Yamaha, and it lines up perfectly. So I'm just gonna clean off this old material and I'll use this one instead. Yeah, that'll do. So there's a couple things here that don't seem right. First is when this actuates, that's as far as it goes. And yeah, it's not quite far enough. It seems like it should be more like that. The other thing is too, I was assuming that this was some sort of a switch, but it's always making contact. So something doesn't quite seem right, or maybe I'm just not understanding the purpose of this here. So I'll put it back together for now, but I do suspect that something isn't quite right in there. Yeah, someone was chasing a problem. This spark plug is brand new, never seen any action. Let's make sure this works. Okay, good. Got the compression tester hooked up now. Just want to see where we're at. Generally, these have a compression release, so around 60, maybe between 50 and 60 is about the best you'd see. And I'm going to hold the choke open while doing this. Okay, that's actually uh, pretty good. We're almost at 90 psi, so. Plenty of compression. So the light is starting to stay on when I unplug the charger. So this battery is showing signs of life. Now, I've only had it on the charger for maybe an hour and a half or so, so I'm gonna let it bake a bit longer before making a call on this. Gonna give this thing a quick try. I just put this fuel line on temporarily, filled up the bowl, and the fuel level's right about there. So if it does start, it's only gonna run for a few seconds, but that's good enough. Just wanna do a quick test here.
Okay, so that's not too promising. It's acting like there's no spark or no fuel, but I know I have both. And the compression seemed good as well, so I am gonna dribble a little bit of fuel down the spark plug hole and try this again. Interesting. So, the engine sounds good. We got timing, we got spark, we got compression, but we don't have fuel. So I'm a little suspicious of this line right here. This is a vacuum line on the intake, and if there's a break in this line, it could be preventing, you know, air from flowing properly through the carburetor. So I'm going to clamp this off and just try pulling the cord again. I did put some more two cycle fuel in here, so it should start at least for a second, but uh, hopefully it keeps going this time. Yeah, it might be a vacuum leak. So with the line pinched off, it didn't actuate the choke. So when I pushed it manually, the engine sped up real nice. I took this off and it stalled. So maybe a coincidence, maybe not. I'm gonna try this one more time, let it run a little bit longer before removing these clamps. And I've got a light hooked up this time. So I wanna see that it makes power stays running with the clamp on and then you know after 20 30 seconds if it stays running i'll pull the clamp see what happens Okay, well the good news is it makes power, but still not getting anything from that carb. And I didn't take the clamp off, so most likely it's not a vacuum leak. There's still something going on with that carb. Maybe a slight oversight on my part. This line has been sucked dry. So maybe just that few seconds of running emptied the bowl. So I got out the shop tank. I'm gonna hook it up. Try it again without pinching that line and not putting any fuel down the cylinder and see if it'll start uh, without any help. Okay, we'll try this again, clamps on, and I fed some two-stroke gas down there.
Okay, well the good news is we don't have a vacuum leak. And when I took the clamp off of here, I saw this um, actuate the choke lever open. And that's when it started to stall. So it wasn't until I closed the choke some that it came back. So yeah, definitely still have an issue going on in that carb. You know, unfortunately, I'm out of the Harbor Freight super heavy duty degreaser, which works quite well. I used something else and uh, you know, it's, it's not as effective at cleaning and degreasing. So might make a trip to the store and uh, take this thing apart and clean it up one more time. So tore this thing apart again. Don't see anything concerning. So whatever I'm missing, I'm still missing it. But I did make a stop at Harbor Freight and picked up the good degreaser that I normally use. So I'm going to put it through the ultrasonic again with this and put it back together and try it again. So I think this battery recovered when I unplugged the charger now. There's no change in the brightness of that light. So I'll check the voltage, but I think we're good. Got the carb bolted back on like before and the fuel bottle hooked up. So we're pretty much ready to give this thing another try. You know, this time we get the battery on, so I will try the electric start. Now, I did discover something actually, despite what I said before. You know, while this thing was in the ultrasonic the second time, I thought I'd check eBay for a clone option and was coming up empty so I found the parts diagram for this carb and discovered two things a new carb OEM is $300 so I don't want to do that the second thing I discovered is that the emulsion tube is actually in two pieces and I haven't come across that before so the piece I removed originally was actually the blending part of it where it combines the fuel with the air and the second part is the nozzle which sticks out into the main throat of the carb so sure enough i looked up there and there was a brass fitting for that nozzle still in there now it is removable but i didn't have a screwdriver that could get it out and it is just a tube so i took a brush put it in there and couldn't get it through so applied a little more force and then it popped through a bunch of debris came out most likely some sort of an insect nest so hopefully that's it because plan b is buying a new carb that's not going to happen for 300 dollars. so let's try this thing out again Much, much better. So let me get the space heaters out. I want to check the voltage, see how it does under load, and check the engine speed as well. I'm not going to be able to test this thing at half load. Supposedly this is a 6,000 continuous watt generator, but this plug here is only 20 amps at 240 volts, and it'll do 40 amps at 120, and that's only 4,800 watts. This is the biggest plug on here. So I guess that's the first issue. The other one is this 20 amp outlet. Usually they wire it in such a way that it's 20 amps each, 40 in total, but they've wired it together. And I've verified that with the fuses. So right now both are off and we get no continuity. I turn this one on and we have continuity. So this here at 20 amps will max out at 2400 watts. So what I'll do is I'll turn one heater on 1500 watts, the other one on 800, and that'll bring us pretty close to 20 amps.
Okay, not too bad. Engine speed is good without a load. It was 62 hertz. And even loaded up to 2300 watts, you know, the engine speed was around 60 hertz. So that's, that's what I like to see as far as that goes. Now the voltage is another story. This was way too high. You know, generally 127, 129 is the upper end of okay. So I'm gonna dig into that a bit more. I actually have been looking around and discovered a knob right there. And I'm willing to bet that might be an adjustment for the voltage. So I'm gonna start it back up, no load, turn that knob and see if we can get that voltage down to a more acceptable level. Yeah, so that's exactly what that was. It was actually clockwise to turn the voltage down. A little different from the AVRs I normally see, but now we're at about 122 volts, 123, uh, which is safe. So now that this thing is doing what it should be, I'm gonna order some parts. And this doesn't need much. I think the biggest thing that stood out initially was the lack of anything to tie down and hold this battery. There's supposed to be some J bolts on each side and a piece of angle iron holding this thing in. That's completely missing. The other thing is the air filter. It's hidden behind here. At least it's supposed to be. There's nothing here except some dust. So I'm gonna get those things ordered and while waiting for that to come in, I'm gonna pretty this thing up a bit. You know, the chrome isn't in bad shape, but there is rust that most of which can probably be cleaned off without much effort. Also, there is evidence of a critter. So I'm just gonna vacuum and blow the dust out. And lastly, the battery tray. It is rusted quite bad, so I'll throw a fresh coat of paint on that. And I was thinking about painting this heat shield. I mean, the worst of it's on top which is covered by the tank, so you're never gonna see that. And it's actually not too bad from the side. So I might leave good enough alone with that. Anyway, enough talking. I'm gonna get those parts ordered and get this thing cleaned up. I cleaned up pretty well. I mean, the chrome looks a lot better. Not perfect, but definitely took a few years off. Anyway, I'm tempted to put this whole thing together. You know, the tray is dry and ready to go. So I wanted to put the tray back, the tank, and this cover, 
which goes above the servo. The only problem is this goes in between the carb and the intake. So potentially just installing this could create a vacuum leak and then we have a problem again. So I'm gonna leave the tank off for now, throw this in, throw the tray back on, do one more test, make sure we're still good. And if that checks out, we'll throw the tank on and just finish this up as much as we can. Okay, we'll do a quick test. Make sure it still works. Okay, good. The uh, J-hooks came in today for the battery, so I'm gonna throw that tank on, put the new fuel lines, and secure the battery.
these are the J-hooks I got right here. They're meant for a car battery, so I did have to chop about an inch and a half off the end. Anyway, they just go in the side here, and I just cut a piece of angle, painted it black, and put some holes on each side. So it'll go something like that on both sides and clamp it right down. Okay, new filter is here. Just gonna throw a little bit of oil on it. Hopefully it fits, and then we'll just do the final test. So that's pretty much it. I mean, this thing, it runs really well. And I've got to say, pretty impressed with this generator. For its size, 6,000 watts, it is at least 100 pounds heavier than anything else made today. It is a solid machine. It's probably going to last for many more years with a little bit of maintenance. So, hope this video helps someone. Thanks for watching. <laughs> okay.